Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of bacterial vaginosis or BV. If you want more information on how it's diagnosed and treated, please check my full lesson on this topic. So bacterial vaginosis is also known as nonspecific vaginitis. Vaginitis means inflammation of the vagina. More specifically, it is a bacterial infection of the vagina. So what's going to happen in this particular condition is that there's going to be disruptions to normal vaginal bacterial flora. So what's normally going to happen is that there's going to be normal species of bacteria in the vagina, and there's going to be particular species that help regulate acidity and also prevent other bad species from growing too much. So some of the important species that can be within the vagina that helps with acidity of the vagina is lactobacillus. But in bacterial vaginosis, there is often a decreased number of this particular species. And then we can also see an increased number of another particular species known as Gardnerella vaginalis. So we get a decrease in lactobacillus and an increase in Gardnerella vaginalis, among some other species as well. All of this is going to lead to issues with changes in bacterial flora. So there's going to be alterations to normal flora. There's going to be bacterial overgrowth. Some species will grow more than they should because we're going to have changes to other species. And because we talked about the fact that lactobacillus is important in maintaining vaginal acidity, there's going to be vaginal pH changes as well. And this will also tie in with alterations in normal flora and bacterial overgrowth. All of this is going to lead to irritation and inflammation of the vagina and surrounding structures. So what are some of the risk factors for getting bacterial vaginosis? Some of these include recent antibiotic use. You can imagine if you're taking antibiotics, you can remove or clear out some of the normal healthy bacteria and because of that, then bad bacteria can come in and grow more. We can also see this in patients who have decreased estrogen levels, individuals who use intrauterine devices, douching, having multiple sexual partners, and also having previous BV as well. All of these factors are associated with an increased risk. And also we may see smoking as a potential associated risk as well. And bacterial vaginosis is so common that it has been estimated that it can occur in up to one third of biological females at least some point in their life. Now let's talk about those signs and symptoms of bacterial vaginosis. The first one is going to be vaginal odor. So this is actually the most common finding. It's going to often be the initial finding. This will be the particular finding that is going to often alert the patient that there is some issue. The smell is going to be described as fishy, and it's going to be more pronounced post-coitus. So after intercourse, then there's often this smell, this fishy smell that can occur. Another finding can be vaginal discharge. So vaginal discharge can be mild to moderate, it's often going to be thin mucus discharge, and it's going to be gray or slightly white in coloration. So this can help distinguish from other gynecological infections like a yeast infection, for instance. We can also have vulva irritation. So the vulva itself can become irritated and inflamed as well, again, due to bacterial overgrowth, vaginal pH changes, etc. And then we can also get vaginal pruritus in some cases. Pruritus is an itching sensation. This may occur, but it may not in some cases. And again, this is also due to irritation and inflammation. And then we can also see findings like dyspareunia. Dyspareunia is pain during intercourse. This can occur in some patients with bacterial vaginosis. And then in some more uncommon cases, we may see dysuria as well. So dysuria is again going to be uncommon and it's going to be a burning sensation when urinating. So again, it's due to a lot of that irritation that may be going on in the vagina, vulva, and surrounding structures. So this could be something that could occur in some patients. Now, having bacterial vaginosis can also increase the risk of having other problems as well. Some of these include the fact that bacterial vaginosis, having it, can increase the risk of STIs and pelvic inflammatory disease. And if you have bacterial vaginosis, it increases the risk of having early pregnancy delivery as well. Please check my full lesson on bacterial vaginosis if you want more information on how it's diagnosed and treated. Please consider joining as a member for members-only content. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and hope to see you next time.